So like I said, this song starts off really quietly. And let me just show you the madness of this song because it is very extreme. If I go to the end. I mean, we've gone from, if, you, if I'm looking at the meters, and this is without, without the compressors doing much, it's all about minus seven, and now the meters are flat out. That's what this song naturally does. And I, I tend to not want to mess too much with dynamics when it comes to Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, because that's what they're all about. They're, they're not about having a song that comes in loud on the radio and sounds louder than the, the song before. We're not thinking that way. It's all about the dynamic within the song. So I'll go to the loudest bit of the song and set the compressor to match that. So, again, with this song, this is a very unusual song because it goes from so quiet to so loud. So, no matter what I do, realistically, the beginning of the song is not going to be compressed at all, and the end of it is going to be pretty damn squashed. So, that's just the nature of this beast. My mixing process is a bit of a juggling thing, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll set the, the stereo bus to a certain level, push the faders up, play around with them a bit, and it's this kind of juggling sort of game to get it all central. And very often, I will end up with everything being too loud. But uh, on all automated desks, you know, we can just select all the faders and bring them all down a bit so it's not overloading the bus. But um, anybody who's done mixing probably has gone through that process. But she had no pants. So like I said, I've put all the faders roughly in a row, uh, just to get a feel for the song. And um, I find sometimes it's, you know, I want to minim minimalize it a little bit. So I'll just solo all the drums. And have the bass and the, in this case, the guitar. So it's kind of like the basic, the basic backing track of the band playing. And I'll just try and get this to really, really work so that I can then balance my other instruments around the band. So while once I've got it into a, a sort of place where I, I'm enjoying the feeling of it, and for instance, I might think, okay, the kick drum needs a little more low end to it, and it's not the kind of low end that I can just EQ. I do have a couple of tricks that always help me get a little bit more kick drum sound. So sometimes I have gates that I use in internally. Sometimes I use drama noise gates as external. So this is just what you're hearing now is just the natural sound, which is actually a pretty, pretty good sound. The drummer is very good at tuning the drums. It's not a bad kick drum sound, but if, if I wanted a little more kick, what I very often do is send it to a sans amp and distort it. And uh, usually, I distort the low end in particular, so it actually has a note to it. And, um, and I usually tune that note to the song, because uh, I like to keep things musical. And the, the way I do that, you could either 
uh, do it with a, a very, very sharp and focused kind of equalizer, which are very hard to find unless you get into the film world and find a, a sort of a notch filter, but the reverse of a notch filter. I actually find the, the, some of the EQs in, in, that I can use in Pro Tools will go very narrow. And so when I go to the low end, I can actually move, sweep the low end, and it actually plays notes. Uh, and that's something I do quite often. So here we've got the, uh, the raw kick drum. So I think I want it to have a little bit more clarity in the top end. So I'll get that from the, the close mic. And then over here, that's the sans amp, which as you can hear is just this woofy sound. So the idea is I'm going to mix them both together. So over here I've got the sans amp and depending on how, how hard I drive it, I can get all kinds of crazy sounds. I could make it sound like nine inch nails if I really wanted to go there. So, you know, you can do all kinds of things, which uh, is very... But in this case, really, all I want is a bit more... I want a bit more boom, so... And the great thing I find about sans amps is control over the low end and top end. Um, and you can affect what distorts so let's say we'll go with that. And I've also got this going um, through a gate before it gets there, because otherwise it would be a ridiculous sound. And in this case, I've got a drama, uh, which are my favorite uh, real noise gates. It's the DS201s. So I just uh, adjust this to the length that I want. As you can hear, I can make the note really long or short. So this might sound all a bit unnatural for a, a Nick Cave type record, but this is going to be mixed in with the original. So it just gives me the, this control when I put them both together. As you can hear, can, the, the note is now longer. And then we can take it even further. So what I'll do is I'll listen to it with the bass, for example, and see how the two work together and pick a favorable note. So these, these are the sort of things that to me, Pro Tools is, is wonderful because you can do very focused uh, things. You can, you can, you know, you can focus your, your, your sonic ideas really easily. And they can also change through the song because you can automate them. On Jubilee Street, there was a girl named 